we were just discussing what our banter was going to be for this week. And <laughs> I brought up the fact that Salem has a newfound obsession for turkeys and chickens because oh. <laughs> my neighbor's animals wandered over the other morning and this morning, actually, to say hello. And I was kind of like sitting there because I've been working like nonstop on this case that I'm going to present to you today. Um, been working nonstop on that. So I'm like, I've been up until about 6 a.m. each morning. And I'm like, the sun's coming out. I need to go to bed because I am a true vampire. So I was sitting there and at like five in the morning, I hear, Wah! I'm like, he sounds a little <laughs> too close. Where, where is he? So I opened up my blinds and he's standing right next to my RV looking at me like, do you got food? Hello, human. Hello? <laughs> Can you feed me? Can you feed me? I'm like, I don't have food for you, but good morning. <laughs> He'd wander down the road and do it. I'm like, Salem's wandering around like, the fuck is that noise, mom? Why is it close I'm this morning? That. <laughs> what is the noise? Yeah, poor so, Salem. She's going to be in for a world of wide awakenings. Oh my god. She Especially was... if you get... You get claw or what's your guy's Carl. name? Carl. 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 Carl the turkey. Carl oh, we got to come turkey. up with names for the two hands. But, thing one and thing yeah. two. Wait, what were the uh, names of the twins in Alice in Wonderland? Fuck if I know, man. I don't fucking know either, which is really sad because I love Alice. Oh, are you talking Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Yeah, that would fit. <laughs> they're they're guineas. They're guinea they're hens. Pretty friggin' stupid. Oh Jesus, yeah. But anyway, no, that her adventures, yes. Salem was obsessed with the rooster as he was walking back down the road going home. And then she hears, oh, oh. And I look over to my left, and there's three turkeys wandering my woods. I'm like, huh, those are my neighbors too. I'm like, Salem, you want to see a turkey? And she looks at me like, what the fuck is a turkey? <laughs> <laughs> like I opened up Can the, I write it, mommy? <laughs> I opened up the blinds for her and she got really low, like, why is that bird so fucking big? That's a big You have bird. no idea, Salem. They're far away from you and they're mm -hmm. still big. They're still big mm -hmm. and they're far away. Yep. Well, then you had a bat try to come into the camper. Oh my god. I well what had happened was that I was cleaning after I got done doing laundry and putting stuff away because I always go into the like manic stage of like everything needs to be clean now. So it's like I had my cleaning spree. And as I was getting ready to toss the fragments of dirt back outside, a moth flies in. So I'm like, well shit. So I try to like shoo it out because a, I don't want it in there. B, I don't want to kill it. I'm trying to shoot it out and two more fly in. And then here comes a fucking bat. So while I'm like waving my hand trying to shoo these fucking moths out, I fucking full on volleyball smack the fuck out of a bat. <laughs> He's probably going, what just happened? That's exactly what he did. He just kind of like sat there stunned on the ground for a while. I like closed the door. I'm like, I'll kill the moths. That's fine. <laughs> God. I just don't want the rabies from exactly. the bat. I'm like, I want to wash yeah. my hands immediately. Salem was looking at me like, what the fuck was that, mom? I'm like, I just expelled a <laughs> demon. Don't mind me. Meanwhile, I'm like, the poor Sky puppy, I feel so bad. <laughs> I just smacked the shit out of him. He didn't do anything. He was, just he was for looking food. for food. <laughs> well, are you ready for my adventures? And oh my God, she hasn't lived here for four years. Why the fuck am I still finding her socks? Who am I one? talking about? <laughs> it's me. One? It's no. Me, Jessica. <laughs> I'm in here. I'm like, <laughs> it's laying between the washer and the dryer, and I'm like, it's a sock. <laughs> and I know it's not my sock because I don't wear the little shorty fucking socks. And I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. And your dad comes around the corner. He's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, fucking sock he's like "Ooh, i can do you one better we go back into the bedroom he opens up his laundry drawer his sock drawer and there's a yellow katie sock in his laundry drawer oh did he steal like, my other sure. shit emoji one no i have i think or it's gray it... with hearts okay mine is gray with hearts his was just a solid yellow one a solid like almost like, like a uh egg yolk yellow one that he has 
Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering where that bitch went. Yeah, I I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah, it's back here. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's coming back to you. I'm, I mean, I swear to God, people, she will never fucking run out of socks. Ever. Are you sure? Because I Ever. wear through them constantly. Yeah, you wear through them, but you constantly, you wear out two, you replace with 20. Yeah, it's the high And method. none of them match. <laughs> none of them match. <laughs> Ever. If she buys them in matching pairs, that's the last time they see each other. It's like, buy my love, buy. Hold on, Jack. Hold on, Jack. I'll never no, let they're go. fucking gone. Yeah. Yeah, and your brother's don't like, if you don't wear matching socks, why would it matter what, what they do? Like, you might as well have one going up your shin and one down at your ankle. I'm like, ew, no. No, 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 no. If they're... If they're... <laughs> Okay, here's my OCD. No, they have to be the same level. That's where I draw the line. No, they have to be the same level and the same fabric. So I can't have like a compression sock on one and then like a loose fucking sock on the other. No, no. Or like the soft, cozy sock. Like not the like stay at home sock, not the fuzzy socks, but like the soft, cozy ones that you would get like at Cabela's or something like that. Mm -hmm. They have to be put together because they're the same fabric. If they're different fabrics, hell no. Hell no, I did that the other day accidentally. I fucking put one fabric on and then the other, and I went bleh, bleh, bleh. the fastest I have ever peeled socks off my feet. You are just too weird for words. I am. Just, you are really, really weird for words. But yes, you do go through socks. You and your dad are the only two people I know that will actually wear out socks. I think I've gone through maybe a dozen socks in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But you do like, but I don't wear them. I, even right now I'm barefooted. I have socks touching on right now. things under my desk and freaking myself out because I forgot that I have my shoes underneath there. Nope. I will wear but, socks yeah. throughout the summer, throughout the year. I don't care how hot it gets, how humid. Mm -mm. Socks. Yeah. Well, you and your dad both have sweaty ass feet. So that explains it. Me, I'm like, no, barefoot if I can do it, which probably explains why I have so many foot issues, but still, I love being barefoot. But anyways. Anyways. Oh, T minus. A week and some change, dude. On your mommy's gonna be there. I'm so excited. I'm gonna have to deep clean Are you? everything. Yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna have to clean big time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'll get there and go. Oh, I gotta clean this because it's not up to my standards. It has been I'm too a little bad. Overwhelming. I'm like honestly, yeah. I'm just waiting for it to get wet enough so I can burn trash and get rid of some of that. It's coming. You got like four days of rain starting. I know it tonight, hasn't started. Just... It hasn't stopped raining today. It's been raining since seven a.m. No, we had a little bit of spit here, and then it's just been cloudy. That's about it. So, I'm ready for a change of scenery. I'm not bet. looking forward to the long ass drive, but a change of scenery will be nice. And get to see my baby. Hi. 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 <laughs> well, she works so hard to entertain me. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> and right now I'm on sleep deprived mode. So this should be fun. It's good for you. Yeah. You're young. Enjoy it. Is it? Because my heart <laughs> says it's not. The fucking palpitations I was feeling while laying in bed this afternoon. I'm like, please make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other, just make it stop. <laughs> well, you got to remember, you do sleep deprivation due to research and stuff like that. I did it because I was out fucking around and finding out. So, yeah, I yeah. don't go out and fuck around and find out. I do it because I've researched a serial killer for the past four days and I don't want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> my brain says, no. Now it's my turn because I don't know all the details. I just know a little bit and the pits and parcels. And <sighs> well, I do not have alcohol. So that might change. <laughs> Should I go brace myself? It probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So while you're gone, I'm going to go ahead and go into our disclaimer and trigger warnings. So while we understand that some individuals listen for the entertainment aspect of true crime, it's important to remember that these people have families and friends that may still be suffering from their loss. These stories are not meant to open old wounds, cause further emotional damage to those involved. We remind you to please be respectful, do not dox, or contact those involved with cases. The cases discussed in this podcast may be disturbing to some viewers, and listener discretion is advised. So, as far as fucking trigger warnings go today... Everything. Near everything. I have cannibalism. I oh, have... Fuck. 
Sexual assaults. We knew that. I have children involved. No. And I want to say there might be a little bit of domestic violence in one of these, but it's not hugely played upon. So, at the request of my mother, we are revisiting the case of the Countess Elizabeth Battery, which that is the last time I am going to say her name like that. We will be henceforth calling her as what she's known by most days, Elizabeth Bathory. Works for me. Countess Elizabeth Bathory was born to parents Baron Yorhi the Sixth and Baroness Anne Bathory on August seventh of fifteen sixty, in near Barter, Hungary. Elizabeth was born into the Bathory clan a group of prominent Protestant nobility in Hungary. Her family controlled Transylvania and consisted of knights, cardinals, judges, and her uncle Stephen, Bathory, was actually the king of Poland. Oh, wow. The relationship of George VI and Anne came as a way to strengthen... Sorry, Jorhi. Jorhi. Well, it or is. he. Well, technically, it is George in today's standards. George, George the Sixth, and Anne, like they came apart as an alliance to strengthen Yorhi's growing alliance with Stephen by marrying his sister. Okay. Now, George the Sixth was the son of Andrew Bathory the Fourth, and Stephen Bathory the Ninth was the son of Stephen the Seventh. And from what I could tell, this would make Anna and George some type of cousins. Yes. In fact, was not unheard of. Which was is not, not unheard, unheard of. of. It's not unheard of no. at all. So they're either cousins or some very close relation. Like, they're not super separated. Like, I would say maybe cousins separated by two. But, yeah. it's They, there was, they wanted to keep everything in the family, including mm -hmm. lineage. So Yeah. So that way it doesn't go to a different state or different country. Exactly. Yeah. So like we were saying, unfortunately, there's a large amount of generational inbreeding. But this is often the case with nobility-based marriages. Right. So Elizabeth, as a result, experienced a number of different health problems as a child. She suffered from what they called falling sickness beginning at the ages of four to five years old, which is something more commonly known as today as epilepsy. Oh, jeez. So at the time... Falling sickness was treated by rubbing the blood of a non-sufferer on the lips of someone that was suffering, or by giving the epileptic person a mix of the non-sufferer's blood and possibly a piece of their skull as the episode ended as like an appeasement to either the demon or whatever was inside them to make it stop. Jesus. So there you go. Her first <laughs> big thing going well, on. Well, now we're finding out why. <laughs> yeah, now we kind of know. So, now we kind of got an idea. <laughs> Elizabeth herself would write in her journals later about the intense headaches and eye pain that she would feel at times, most likely due to being epileptic. Mm. However, with this ailment weighing on her from an early age, it didn't stop Elizabeth from doing what she had and having her wits about her. She was all together other than when she had her seizures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually when she was having her seizures or stressed, she would suffer from uncontrollable fits of rage and increased aggression. Ooh, don't shake the baby. Mm-hmm. So she was raised at the family castle in Ased, Hungary, and I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that and any of the other words coming up in this, but that one actually does not have a pronunciation because the town does not exist anymore, and there's no reverberation of how that was even pronounced. Okay. So there are reports that her family was cruel, practiced witchcraft, and Satanistic worship all of which Elizabeth was exposed to at a young age. Whoa. It was rumored that Elizabeth's aunt Clara, who by accounts was a distinguished lady at the court, was also a lesbian and a witch. Now, is that hearsay? It's founded information? Hearsay, but it also doesn't necessarily have unfounded information with it. 
Okay, because, you know, people were kind of evil and would come up with rumors yeah. and shit to disgrace people. So. I, you're going to see a lot of that happening here where it's part of the reason why her story is so notorious is just because we don't know. Right. It's Well, God, how many hundreds of years difference is there? Five, six hundred years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with Aunt Clara, it's theorized that... She was the one who most likely introduced the practice of sadism to young Elizabeth. Now, more specifically, Clara passed along the technique of performing torturous acts for sexual gratification. Just going to go with, wow, we've heard that story a few times from mm -hmm. various other, yeah. So one of Elizabeth's uncles was reportedly an alchemist and a devil worshiper. And Elizabeth's own brother was regarded as a scoundrel to which no woman or female child was considered to be safe in his presence. Scoundrels put in it. That was a heavy word back then. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> God. Letcher and a rake would be one, too. Yeah. So to make matters worse, Elizabeth's nurse from childhood, one Elena Yo, practiced black magic and reportedly would sacrifice children for their bones and blood. Jesus Christ. During her time in Hungary, there were numerous battles between the Ottoman Empire and Austria's Habsburg armies, which was basically invading from both sides of Hungary at the same time and everything else going on all together. So as you can imagine, it's a stressful period to live in. To say the least. Now, there's a lot of crazy things happening around young Elizabeth, and she's getting a front row seat to all of this as one of the most predominant nobles in the location at the time. Elizabeth had most likely seen a couple of executions in her time. However, I do want to point out that one that she was said to have had a front row seat to, one Jorge Dozes execution, which took place in 1514, doesn't fit up with her timeline. However, okay. I do want to run through it as it gives a good example as to what the executions may have looked like for young Elizabeth to be a part of. Right. So, and actually, they were all encouraged to go out. All the peasants, everybody were mm -hmm. usually forced to watch that stuff. Oh, absolutely. It was to make an example. Mm -hmm. Learn from it. Mm -hmm. And it was also done in creative ways to force entertainment upon things. Well, yeah, Romans were good at that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Jorhi was the leader of a peasant's revolt in Hungary against the kingdom's nobility in the region, which saw him leading a small group against an army of Jean Zepolia and Estevan Bathory. Oh, okay. So, here we go. As you can All imagine, right. this didn't end well, and Jorhi was apprehended after the battle. His punishment for crimes against the kingdom was that he was condemned to sit upon a smoldering heated iron throne and wear a heated iron crown while holding a red hot scepter to mock his ambition of being king. That sounds about right. I figured they were going to do something more oh, of like the... Just wait. I'm not finished oh, okay. yet. <laughs> That's just the starter? Is that just the... the That's just the teaser. Um, 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 <laughs> so... In lead of Yorhi's execution was that of his younger brother, Gregorli, who was cut into three pieces, despite Yorhi begging he be spared. During Yorhi's execution, however, executioners removed pliers from the fire and forced them into Yorhi's skin. They would then tear off pieces of flesh and force the remaining rebels in attendance to take bites with the pliers in their mouth and swallow the remaining flesh. Mm-hmm. The ones that refused to do so were simply cut up and dispatched with in order to yep. prompt others to comply. Hey, I'm going to go with, uh, take me out. I ain't eating the flesh of the flesh. <laughs> I, I ain't doing that. Thanks for the offer, but nope. no. Just lop my head off. Do whatever you have to do. I ain't eating somebody else. That's gross. After the execution, rebels who obeyed were released and left alone. Well, that was mighty nice of them. Oh, right. There is other I, notes that other podcasts have made that there may have been actually molten like metal poured over your heat during this fiasco too. I was going to say so, that, that what you were describing sounds a little tame. It was a little the, tame, but it's still like, well, 
medieval. I figured they were going to sit his ass down on whatever that thing was that, you know, oh, strap the, the uh, on it. What is it? Is it the uh, Judas Triangle or something like that? Something like that, yeah, where they set you down and literally just drove a wedge and mm-hmm. split you in, into the nethers. Yeah. Figured something like that or, you know, the pair of death or whatever up the booty hole. anguish. Yeah. So this revolt saw the torture of nearly 70,000 peasants in the area, which aided the 1526 Ottoman Empire invasion into Hungarian soil as the political structure was no longer aligned with its people. Many peasants rejected military service against the Ottomans, which led to new laws being made with consequences to those who were refused to serve say that again because you're too far away from your mic i said nobody really wanted to ever go up against the ottomans because they were thought to be crazy oh they are i'm like i've done research papers regarding genocides that the ottomans did it it was fucking insane oh Oh, god yeah that's just yeah tip of the iceberg on some of the shit i've Mm -hmm. read so yeah There were also accounts of Elizabeth witnessing the execution of a man who was accused of selling his children or other children to the Ottoman Empire or the Turkish. This man was condemned to be sewn inside the belly of a dead horse, which, believe it or not, is not an unpopular execution method during this time. Lovely. So this method, from what I found, saw the bones of the offender or victim being broken to the point where they are unable to move themselves or escape. They would then be pushed inside the abdomen of a dead horse and sewn inside. So during this ordeal, Elizabeth watched with intense interest and reportedly giggled every time the man's head would poke out of the horse's belly until it was finally sewn up completely and he disappeared into his grisly tomb. Ish. You gotta understand, uh, I kind of go with the thought of she's pretty young at the time. Maybe the thought of it wasn't really reality? Maybe. Who it knows? might just be that one thing that's like, oh, this isn't actually real, like... This is yeah. This is all for fun and games, and I was like, "What happened to him?" And your dad's just like, "Oh yeah, he's fine." <laughs> well, yeah, he, he he the horse got up and ran away, and he popped out. Yeah, no, yeah. So you don't know. Now, aside from all this, Elizabeth, being a noble, was well educated. She learned Latin, German, Hungarian, Greek, and a couple other languages as a young woman. She also showed interest in science and astronomy. Elizabeth learned how to run a noble household. And even when she did differ from other noble girls at her age, there weren't really many red flags. Elizabeth would often be found dressing as a boy, but to people around her, this wasn't anything to be too alarmed about. She's a kid. She's running around. She's having fun. Well, yeah. There's also reports that as she grew older, she began practicing witchcraft and carrying around a parchment which was inscribed with an incantation for protection. The parchment itself was rumored to have called upon the deity Istin for help, health, and long life. At the age of 10, Elizabeth's parents tragically had passed away and she was left alone at the Bathory estate. She was betrothed not too long after to Francis Nadasti, a nobleman and heir to one of the wealthiest dynasties in the region. I'm surprised they differentiated from going ahead and selling her back to an uncle or something. Right. However, he was technically a lower standing than his wife was considered to be. So during this time, Elizabeth is also starting to gain a reputation of being promiscuous. And there is possible allegations of her becoming pregnant at the age of 14 by a peasant boy or a lesser nobleman. So to avoid a future scandal being brought to light and insulting her betrothal to an aristocrat, both were sequestered to different locations. There are reports that Francis had Elizabeth's lover castrated, then torn into pieces by dogs. Wow, what a guy! Right? The baby girl, however, that Elizabeth had apparently given birth to was quietly hidden from public view. Yeah, probably the best thing that ever happened to her. Mm Mm-hmm. When Elizabeth heard the news of her lover being tortured to death, she was fascinated and interested in the torture rather than being put off by it. Wow. In 1575, Elizabeth, at the age of 15, married Count Francis Nadasti, who was 19 at the time. 
And subsequently, they moved into Castle Chaktis, which was a wedding gift from the Nadasti family. By many accounts, Elizabeth had also begun to turn rather vain and narcissistic at this time. She'd change her clothes upwards to six times a day and spend hours admiring herself in the mirror. I was saying, that is not a quick change back then either Mm -mm. because there was a lot of freaking clothing on. I can tell you because I have done the full like medieval medieval stuff. stuff. It's... You have long underwear on, you have your pantyhose on, you've got your underskirt on, you've got your hoop skirt on, you've got, then you have whatever else might come over that. But for my Mm -hmm. case, it was just the dress after that. But there was a corset too that I had on underneath it. It's, it's a lot to take on and off. And God forbid, if I had to take that off midday, I would be so upset. Yeah, I was going to say, and nine times out of 10, the women went commando underneath just to save time and being able to use the the jakes or the restrooms Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i I won't even go there when it comes to using the restrooms with that shit on yeah exactly so going commando is (laughs) kind of a nice thing Mm -hmm. so elizabeth used all manners of oils and urgents to preserve and whiten her skin and those who served her did not deny her wishes to be continuously praised upon During the time of the marriage, the couple were regarded as happy, and the marriage was well off. Francis even took the surname Bathory, which wouldn't be uncommon because Bathory was a higher titled name. However, in most literature writings, you will see it as Nadasti Bathory or Bathory Nadasti. Right. The two also bonded over one thing that they both had in common, the excitement and interest in torturing their servants. Together, they'd spend the next three years torturing servants and peasants alike. However, it is noted that Francis did have a calming effect over Elizabeth, and while he was around, she didn't engage in torture quite as often. Oh, how wonderful of him. In 1578, Francis became the chief commander of the Hungarian army and embarked on a military campaign against the growing Ottoman Empire leaving his wife in charge of his vast estates and government over the local populace. Elizabeth's duties often include providing medical care and advice to destituate citizens. Elizabeth was described as trying to be confident and sure of herself as Francis was of himself, basically trying to emulate his behavior. And he himself felt that she was confident and like sure of herself. Like, but she's just like, I don't know, man. And he's like, you, you totally are. You're doing good, girl. You're doing, You're doing good. good. You're doing good. I'm like, um. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> God almighty. So Elizabeth was definitely good at giving this impression. When a squatter who was trying to claim the land attempted to give indication that he was opposing her, she stated, do not think I shall leave you to enjoy it. You will find a man in me. Which is basically saying, I'm going to fuck you up. Mm-hmm. I will <laughs> I will squash you like the bug you fucking are. <laughs> so now all of this, as you can imagine, her running a vast amount of estate, dealing with people like this, and anything else is very stressful. And considering Elizabeth is a woman... Corresponding with men that are used to dealing with her husband rather than her just adds to that stress. Additionally, Elizabeth is described as being a perfectionist and she hates making mistakes. While she knows how to run a noble household, managing Francis's estates, land, finances is a whole different animal. Right. So Elizabeth reportedly struggled with this and had no one to turn to at this time. Her parents were both dead. Her husband was gone, although she did receive correspondence with him. But it's not like sending a text message being like, baby, I'm fucking crying. Like, it is days before you're going to hear back. Months. (laughs) Months, Months and months. Sometimes years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes women had no idea what was going on or if their spouses were coming back to them. And she really doesn't know anyone in her new home. So she's kind of alone and on her own. That doesn't bode well. So, while at first everything seemed to be going well under Elizabeth's leadership, rumors began to circle and surface that she was torturing her servants. Mm. To which, we're going to pause real quick here, 
And we're going to talk about Francis himself, who was also regarded as being uncompromising with treatments of the Turkish or anyone of the Ottoman Empire. Well, that's all war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Francis was known to disembowel, impale, and torture his Turkish occupants on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. With there being rumors of Francis dancing with the dead bodies of fallen soldiers and playing catch or football, or what we call soccer here in the United States, with their heads. Francis would also correspond with Elizabeth regularly and happily dispense advice to her on how to discipline the servants. When Francis was home, he would offer Elizabeth practical demonstrations. Here, honey, watch this. I'll show you how it's done. Take notes. In one account, he'd taken a recalcitrant servant girl outside. From there, he stripped her naked, smeared her in honey, before ordering her to stand there in this manner for a day and night in the middle of summer. She suffered numerous bites and stings from insects and other bugs and bees, and reportedly dropped to the ground exhausted, only for Francis to come out with a couple pieces of oiled paper, put them between her toes, and light them on fire to revive her. Oh, pleasant. What a guy. Elizabeth apparently watched and even helped participate with this incident at times. Francis also had another technique that he used during the opposing season, which he also showed Elizabeth, the art of freezing a girl to death in the middle of winter. Francis would strip a servant girl down, pour water over her body until it hardened and she was unable to move. Reportedly, Francis would also send Elizabeth correspondence that contained black magic spells he'd found during his travels that he'd wanted her to try as a token of his love. Francis also encouraged Elizabeth to beat the servant girls to the brink of death, which she reportedly took great pleasure in. So while Francis is away, Elizabeth allegedly began finding new ways to keep herself amused, gathering assortments of different people regarded as witches, sorcerers, alchemists, along with practitioners of what some deem to be the black arts during this time, then engaging in acts of cruelty upon the local populace. Elizabeth also at this time had an assortment of male lovers, and like her notorious aunt Clara, she apparently indulged in lesbian sexual relations as well. Now, did the husband know about this? I'm not entirely sure. I'm really not sure. Because I'm sure there's, you know, somebody's going to be ratting her ass out. You know that. Maybe he liked it. I don't fucking know, man. If it's her property, the servants would be loyal to her. But it's his property, so by all rights, they would be loyal to him. But technically, so, she is the higher ranking individual. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. You will still have. I imagine those he needs to be loyal, some sort. Um, I'm, I'm thinking he was as long as you're like not doing it out in public and like not getting pregnant. Like, go to God bless, have a good time. How long was he gone from her? I'd say at least a he year. He was constantly in and out. Yeah, like so. he would come home during the more pro predominant holidays and spend right. time, but otherwise. He's in and out of there constantly. It's not a standard like, oh, he comes home for a couple of weeks and then he's gone. No, like he's in for a couple of days and then he's gone for months. Months on end. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was figuring. So it's like, mm, it was probably excused, but still, you wonder. Additionally, there is a rumor that Elizabeth and her dear aunt Clara may have engaged in the incestual sexual relations at some point. It would not fucking surprise me right now. Nope. At it all. It does not surprise me either. Nope. So there's no direct note or report as to when Elizabeth started to kill the servant girls. But with her violence growing in Francis's absence, it's presumed that the murders started sometime in 1578. Elizabeth's torture methods often involved the mutilation of her female victim's genitalia. Your fucking eyes, man. I'm like, you good? I just went, oh my god. Maybe w Ray Parker, Par Parker Ray, David Parker Ray was like a oh, great, no. great descendant of it, man. Oh no, Elizabeth is definitely a sexual oh. sadist. We'll get to that in part and two. And he wasn't? No, he is a sexual sadist. Oh. 
yeah i'm just going maybe they were related or he was like uh oh god what is it uh reincarnated i don't know man it's her reincarnated man oh my god so could you imagine oh jesus christ Elizabeth's torture methods often involved the mutilation of her victim's genitalia. She would stick burning iron rods into the vagina, or sometimes she'd use knives, candles, or even her own teeth to lacerate the sensitive tissue. Good Christ almighty. According to testimony that will come later, not all of Elizabeth's victims were sexually assaulted, but she did display some form of hatred towards all all of them. Due to Francis's military status, he was very rarely at home and very rarely got to see Elizabeth, which was credited to being part of the reason that it took nearly 10 years into their marriage for them to actually have children. That's what my next question was going to be is, did they ever procreate? So from the years of 1585 to 1595, Elizabeth bore five children. God damn, he was there often. Only two daughters and a son would live to full adulthood, which is common because you have diseases and right. other ailments oh, that absolutely. you don't have medical treatment for. Yeah. And you don't want to even know how those children were taken care of. Mm -hmm. That will send you into nightmares. Now, over the time of Francis's absence, Elizabeth would recruit several servants who would help her with the children and accompany her over the next few years. This included her former wet nurse, Elena Yo, another servant, Dorothea Sentish, who went by, and I laughed at this one, Dorco. <laughs> <laughs> she was also a friend of Elena's at the time. Then there is Janos Yivorhi, who also went by Fitzko, meaning little fellow. He was a dwarf. And Anna Darvulia. Now, Anna Darvulia has almost as many lasting rumors surrounding her as Elizabeth does. The main one being that she was a witch and one of Elizabeth's lovers. However, there is no firm evidence to support this claim. And there's no evidence to not support the claim either. No, there's so, not. So, it's all fair love and war, baby! Anna was one of Elizabeth's closest servants and actually encouraged the torture and murder, even teaching Elizabeth some new techniques along the way. Wow, nice of her. Anna was also well-versed in the occult and was reportedly heavily practicing herself, so those two bonded immediately over that. They're besties. They're besties. It's also stated that once Anna arrived in 1601, she became a permanent part of the Countess's inner circle. And with that, Elizabeth became crueler and crueler. Anna became the driving voice in Elizabeth's ear, contrary to Francis, who had advised caution and limits when dealing out torture and punishment. Anna wanted Elizabeth to fulfill all of her darkest desires. Yeah. Now, while Elena, Janos, Anna and Dorco, or Dorothea, were luring in and bringing girls into Elizabeth's castle. Katerina, another servant, was charged in disposing of the remains after the matter. With four people bringing in victims regularly to the now untethered Elizabeth, she's starting to rack up a body count, and it's going fast. Jesus Christ. Between the years of 1602 and 1604, rumors began to spread about Bathory's crimes to one Lutheran minister, Estevan Megari, and he made complaints about her both publicly and in the court of Vienna. As he began to question the unusual number of bodies of young female servants coming from the castle for burial, the countess claimed that the victims died of cholera, but the sheer amount of bodies was making the minister very suspicious. You would think. Additionally, more rumors began to spread regarding the secret chambers that were noted to be as out of bounds to all but the Countess's most trusted servants. Let me guess, down in the dungeon. These rumors turned into whispers of Elizabeth killing these girls in secret rooms with the cruelest of ways. Whipping, beating, burning gouging out their flesh, and even biting them. Good God, what a monster. To which, in older time periods, or even today still, 
female violence is seen as a private matter. So Elizabeth would most likely keep these sessions that she's doing torturous acts with to herself and her most trusted servants in places where others weren't most likely to walk in or stop by. So mom, like you were saying with the dungeons, the dungeon, Mm -hmm. a couple of different areas that these tortures are theorized to be taking place in are kitchens, bathrooms, dungeons, and some of the numerous bed chambers. And during these torture sessions, the only ones being allowed in are other female servants that she trusted. And occasionally, on a rare occasion, Janusz would get to come in. Oh, well, she's nice. Regardless, though, Estevan complained to authorities and nothing was done as these girls were servants. If anything was to be done, the girls or their families would have to raise a complaint with Frances or Elizabeth herself. And guess what? That went nowhere. <laughs> you don't want to fucking do that. That's like approaching your abuser and being like, can you not? <laughs> <laughs> I want you to stop, please. Nope. No, thank you. I know. That's that's the sad thing. It's like they, they could take it up with the church, but the church was very, very limited on what they could do, too. Mm-hmm. So on January 3rd of 1604, Francis wrote a letter to one Lord Jorge Thorzo, a powerful Hungarian noble in Palatine, entrusting him to watch over Elizabeth and his children. Now, in 1604, Francis passed away, and there's contradictory claims as to what exactly happened. One is that he fell ill sometime in 1601, which saw his legs being basically paralyzed and unable to be used. And then he succumbed to this illness in 1604. Okay. Another is that Francis was killed at the hands of Turkish invaders. I would probably say that one. I think that one's more plausible, more but a lot of them go towards the illness. However, there are more scholarly articles that go towards he was killed in battle. Well, he could have been sick and, and wasting away and yeah, it basically could be a mixture of two. himself too. Yeah. Yeah, it could have. Yeah. So regardless though, Elizabeth was only 44 years old when he passed. That's actually quite old for that day and age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of her daughters, Anna Nadosti, would go on to marry the grandson of Mikolos Zarini, who was known as the hero of Ziktivar. And I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. I could not find a pronunciation. It's old language. Katlin Nadosti, or Kata, would go on to wed Jorhi Druguth of Homana. Now, there's reports that Kotlin, the youngest daughter, took part in at least one torture session with her mother prior to her wedding. Oh, spread that love around. Right. The two girls that were tortured were burnt so badly that they later died during the marriage festivities. Oh, Jesus. History knows little about their son, Paul who, due to his young age and the active political environment at the time and everything else going on, was kind of just, like, pushed off to the side. Usually they're they're farmed off to other nobilities. The boys were. That possibly could have been happening. Cousin now. or something like that. Yeah, it's usually, like, you gift your, your noble, your child to and care being brought up and raised correctly as a manly man type of thing. But, yeah, the... The boys were very rarely raised by their family. Yeah. Regardless, though, he is best known in history for his work in translating and publishing the Bible in the Hungarian language. Wow, one of them made it out okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Elizabeth's own wealth and property was combined with that of the Nadosti family, meaning in her husband's death, she now had the right to manage those connections. In Elizabeth's widowhood, she became the owner of one of the largest estates in all of Hungary. Her lands and fortresses stretched all the way from the east to southwest of the Hungarian kingdom. Wow. That's, for that day and age, that's quite the amount of wealth. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's ownership of these various strategic locations could have assisted her cousin, one Prince Gabor Bathory, in his quest to achieve the Hungarian throne. It also could have helped Gabor to campaign into Poland as well, to achieve that crown. Unfortunately, this made Elizabeth a pawn and a victim to political strategy in the power struggle over Transylvania at the time. Now, 
In her husband's absence, Elizabeth's torture of young girls didn't stop. And according to testimonies from her trusted servants of Elizabeth, she amused herself by torturing the young girls with pinchers, needles, razors, knives, red hot iron pokers. But the biggest thing that Elizabeth wanted to deal was the punishment herself. No one else was to deal with the punishment. It was her. So she was one that decided and meted it out. She wanted it to do done by her hand. Yeah. Wow. Some were subject to tortures of Elizabeth's late husband, which he had taught her. Some mm -hmm. were new and of her own devices, such as sewing lips together, forcing self-cannibalism, and like we said earlier, the burning of genitalia. No, Jesus. Two court officials claim to have personally witnessed the killing and torture of young girls at Elizabeth's hands, as well as the alleged self-cannibalism. Additionally, Elizabeth had expanded outside of the castle walls, kidnapping peasant girls to torture and murder as well. Janusz would come into the Hungarian villages surrounding Castle Chaktis, and peasant families would rush to hide their daughters. Can you blame them? Janusz was, like I said, a dwarf. He's a disfigured young man. And among the castle nobles and village folk alike, he's known as Fitzko or Little Fellow. And he's the last person that you want to see. And that's where we're going to end part one. He's probably got some anger issues of his own. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Most fucking definitely. Oh. Yeah. So. Wow. What are you thinking of Miss Elizabeth Vattery so far? You know, uh, it doesn't stun me. I've heard of way worse things. Mm -hmm. For a woman, though, it is pretty fucking high up there. But there are some really evil women, especially in that day and age. Like you say, they're left to their own devices. They can just go fucking crazy and try to oh, do whatever they flip and want to. It's it's nerve wracking. Like going through some of this, I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm gonna have that many more like pages than I originally did. My original like page count and research for this paper, like this case, was nine pages. I am now at thirty five pages. But you also weren't allotted enough time to dive in properly. Yeah, no, I wasn't. So now yeah. you guys get the yeah. full fucking story, and you get to suffer with me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, we do need to do re redo the medieval torture stuff. Oh yeah, I'd be totally up to doing that. that. There are there were I shouldn't say cool, but there are some definite original pieces out there. Yeah, and I think what most people think when it comes to torture is the execution. Oh no. Well, we they, think about torture too, but we definitely think about the executions that happened. Like for example, the blood eagle or yeah. scaffolding or things that you're not expected to live after at all. Well, and see, in most cases of torture, they usually wanted something out of you, information, cooperation, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. So they wanted you to last as long as they possibly could and do the most devious, nastiest things to you while still keeping you alive. Barely. Thank you again for listening to Spattered. Please make sure to follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at Spattered Podcast or on Twitter at Spattered Pod. Be sure to follow and rate the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that follow button. As always, if you have a story request, any questions, or are interested in sponsoring the show, please email me at spatteredpodcast at gmail.com. Spattered is a true crime podcast hosted by Caitlin Gardner. The research and edits for this episode were done by Caitlin Gardner. All the music for the show comes from Lucio Cardenas, James Hansen, and Caitlin Gardner. A special thanks to our guest co-host this week, Joe Len Gardner. We'll see you next time. Stay safe out there. <laughs>